Hey, Canucks fans. Welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, May the 17th. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the good-looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Right off the bat, I want to give a shout-out and a thank you to my, my man, my co-founder of the GLCBC, Brett Lee. He's Maroki on defense, and he's been doing daily vlogs. He's been killing it. He's crushing it. He's doing daily vlogs for the double... Double IHF, why can't I say that? The, the World Hockey Championships. Daily vlogs about his impressions, about teams, players, whatever it may be. And then he invited Gio, Lego Rocks 99 and me to be in his vlog yesterday. And we basically were talking about Pedersen and Hughes and how excited we are to see our young Canucks playing so well for their respective countries. So Brett, thank you for bringing the three of us together finally. It's been two years, um, not only hockey vloggers from Vancouver representing the Canucks, but also members of the GLCPC, of course, and keep up the good work. And it's nice. W. Uh, see, I said again, the double IHF. They put it up. They've been sharing it. Obviously, Brett, Gio, and I have been sharing it. And even the Vancouver Canucks shared it this morning, which we are very grateful for. So it's getting a lot of traffic, and uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback. So thanks again, Brett, and good job, Gio. Good job, Brett. Keep up the good work, and look forward to more collabs in the future. Okay, today, don't hate me. I'm going to talk about the Boston Bruins. And basically, right off the bat, well, I'm going to talk about them because they beat the Carolina Hurricanes 4 nothing. So my song, the Bunch of Jerks song, didn't really go that far. It lasted like seven days, but that's okay. Uh, has still a lot of fun making it. But they beat the Carolina Hurricanes 4 nothing. They win the series 4 nothing, a sweep. And they're getting stronger as the, you know, they only took seven games to get through the first series, six games to get through the second series, only four games to get through the third series. So we'll see what happens in the final as they wait either, await, uh, the, the result of the St. Louis Blues, San Jose Sharks um, series. So I want to talk about Boston, and I'm going to admit that um, as much as I like to play up how much I hate them, I actually don't hate them. I hate Marchand, um, but the rest of the team I'm actually okay with. I, I, in fact, I, I respect them. I respect what they do, and it's hard not to respect them. And I'm going to talk about the Bruins a little bit, their success over the past nine years, and really compared to the Vancouver Canucks, not to make us feel bad or... Um, to over-dramatize this, but I, I think it sets up a really good comparison. Obviously, we know that Boston beat Vancouver in Game 7 in June 2011, and it's very interesting to see what's happened in the eight years since. Now, we know the Van Vancouver Canucks is very simple, right? They made the playoffs 20 in 2012-2013, in both first-round exits. They missed in 14 under John Tortorella. They came back in 15, surprisingly, with Willie De Desjardins as the coach, but uh, you know got ousted in the first round by Calgary. And they haven't been in the playoffs in 16, 17, 18, 19. So it's four straight years without the playoffs. And the only holdovers from that 2011 Stanley Cup team were Alex Edler, who may or may not sign with the team, uh, as a UFA and Chris Tanev who still has a year or two left on his contract I can't remember exactly but um, he only played five games in the playoffs that year basically as a rookie so those are the only two players that have come through for the Vancouver Canucks the drafting has been pretty good with Pedersen and Hughes you know uh, Vertanen still we're not sure Yolevi we're certainly not sure there's been Demko in there so there's been some decent um, drafting as well Di Pietro and, and some of the young guys who we haven't seen yet so that's the Vancouver Canucks, basically. We know that story. But look at the Boston Bruins. It's very impressive when you think about it. Since 2011, when they won the Cup, they've only missed the playoffs twice. And in those two seasons that they missed the playoffs, they had 93 points and 96 points. So it wasn't like they had 71 points or 75 points or even 80 points. 93 points and 96 points. So it really speaks to the quality of competition in their division or in their conference. So those two, you could say they're off season because they didn't make the postseason. But they could have, those numbers are good enough to make the postseason. They would have been this year, at least in the Western Conference. So, again, since 2011, the Bruins have only missed the playoffs twice. And those two years, they had 93 points and 96 points, respectively. The 2011 Boston Bruins also had, um, I, I look at their roster, and they had Zidane Chara, of course, and they had Tuka Rask, who didn't play. Obviously, Tim Thomas did. And then, of course, they had the big three at the time of Krejci, Marchand, and uh, Bergeron, of course. And I like those players. Rask, actually, I don't know much. I, I, don't, I don't care either way. But I, I do respect Chara a lot. I really like Patrice Bergeron as a player. He's, he's a machine, right? You know, Team Canada stalwart. I'd love to have him on the Canucks. Um, I do like David Krejci. I always pick him in my pool somehow. And like I said, Brad Marchand's the only one that I, I don't like. And we don't have to go. I've talked about him before. And I've written songs about him. So although I say I don't like him, I guess I'm giving him attention. Uh, and so those are the five guys that are still on the, the Boston Bruins right now that played in 2011. Again, that was Krejci, 
Bergeron, Marchand, Chara, and Tukarask. Compare that to only two guys, Edler and Tanev. Edler might not even come back. So five guys from Boston, two guys from from Vancouver that are still on the current rosters right now. You also have, uh, the Canucks have been through a few coaches, right? They had Vigneault in 2011, and then since then they've gone Tortorella, and then Desjardins, and Travis Green. So four coaches, including Vigneault. Whereas the Boston Bruins, much more stable. It was Claude Julien at the time, and he got, re- he got um, you know, fired in 2016. Then Bruce Cassidy has come on. So look, half the half the coaches for Boston, two versus four. There's also, um, you know, both teams have had turnover in the front office. Jim Benning came on, Trevor Linden came on and is gone, you know, whereas, and then Boston, it was um, Peter Shirelli gone, and then um, Sweeney coming in to run the team there. So there, there's been, both teams have had changes in their in their front office. And you look at Boston as well, their drafting has been okay. You know, they got, uh, I think the two that you look at are Charlie McAvoy and certainly David Pasternak. Those are two really, really good picks. And they actually found them a bit lower than maybe maybe they could have, like meaning they found them at, as steals, so to speak. Also, there's um, Danton Heinen, local kid. He's in there as well as a mid-round draft, so not bad. You know, the other guys that they've drafted, oh, Jake DeBrusque, obviously. Actually, there's one year where you might remember, I think Boston had 13, 14, 15, or 14, 15, 16. Actually, I think it was 13, 14, 15. And 13 and 15, their picks weren't great, but Jake DeBrusque was number 14 right in the middle there. Yeah, I just remember seeing Boston go up three times in a row. It was crazy. Um, so the Boston Bruins have drafted pretty good when you think of Pasternak, McAvoy, Danton Heinen, and then Jake DeBrusque are in there. And then we'll obviously have to see about their, how the, their draft picks from the last two years pan out. So overall, it paints a picture of stability in Boston. And you can't argue with the results. Uh, since 2011, they've been in the Cup twice, including this year. So 2013, they lost in the final, and then they will be in the Stanley Cup final this year. Like I said, they've also uh, made deep playoff runs and they've only missed two seasons, but still at high point totals overall. And we know why. Bergeron is a beast. We've seen the, we've seen the uh, emergence of Pasternak. Along with Char, you have guys like McAvoy and Krug, Tori Krug coming up behind him to replace him on D. And then they're, they're very well balanced across the four lines. And they, just like uh, any other team, they pick up free agents here and there, veterans to help them out, like David Backus this year. And of course, Tuka Rask and Yersef Halak gave them a really good tandem in net this year. So overall, you know, there, was a, there were a couple times, especially in 2015, 16, after, after the, well, the Canucks were kind of dropping a little bit after Willie D's first year, where Boston Bruins missed the, you know, playoffs those two years and then had to fire the coach, um, Julian, in the third year. Um, of, you know, the third year after missing the, the playoffs for two years. And I remember at that time I was thinking, oh, maybe the Boston Bruins are, 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 have the same, you know, issues that the Canucks have. Maybe they are in a, in a bad space just like the Canucks. But we've seen that's not the case. They had two down years, but they've quickly risen while the Canucks were kind of left behind. Now the Canucks are trying to get up there. So I, all to say, I have respect for the Boston Bruins um, organization. I have respect for certainly a lot of the players. Like I said, I like a lot lot of the players, except for Brad Marchand. And you can't argue with the success and the consistency and the stability of that franchise. I'm not saying I want to move to Boston. I'm not saying that, you know, they're my favorite team. Of course not. But um, if I was to be perfectly honest and try and be objective and take off my Canucks blinders and try and forget about 2011 as hard as it is to do, um, you have, I, I think that you have to give respect and give props to the Boston Bruins organization three stanley cup finals in the span of nine seasons is is very strong you know only pittsburgh and chicago i think recently have been that good maybe la as well i can't remember if they've done two or three but regardless um that's that puts them in some elite company that gives them you know um that just shows how how strong and how how consistent of a franchise they are all right canucks fans let me have it let me have it in the comment section am i being too easy do you want to revoke my membership to the GLCPC? Or do you kind of see where I'm getting at about the consistency, about the stability of that Boston Bruins franchise? You can talk about what I talked about, the coaching, the drafting, the players, the holdovers, whatever it may be. I'd love to read your comments below. So leave a comment below. I'll read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Don't forget to vote for Marie and me in the NHL Fan Choice Awards. We're in, we're in trouble. We're in deep, deep doo-doo. Uh, but... It's still an honor to be nominated. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.